from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So I'm John Fenn, the head of research and programs at the American Folklife Center. We're here on the Coolidge stage with the Fairfield Four, and I'm going to ask you guys each to introduce yourselves and say how long you've been singing with the group. We'll start with you, sir. Yeah. My name is Lavert Allison, and I've been singing with the Fairfield Four about eight years. Okay. My name is Bobby Sherrill, and I started with the group, I think, 2011, so maybe uh I'm seven, six and a half, seven year member. Okay. My name is Loris Bird. I've been singing with the group eight years. And I'm Joe Thompson. Uh, I've been off and on with the group just about all my life. <laughs> but this group, we've been together about eight years. Okay, and this is the third generation. Right. All right. Now, so the group's been active as a entity, <laughs> I don't know what other word to use, for about 95 years, that's right? Correct. That's correct. So, so what, what brought all of you to the group? What, what, what pulled you into it? This, this guy, guy over here. here? Yeah, this guy here. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the other guys from the second generation, they start passing on, you know, so I was part of that generation too, so uh, when it got down to me, you know, I'm about the last one living myself and Robert, so I asked them could I keep the group going, so they gave me their blessing, so uh, I called the bird, and I saw bird, and I said, well, now we need a tenor singer, so Laverde and I, we were racking our brains trying to find a tenor singer, somebody that was dependable and could do, keep the old tradition going, mm -hmm. and then one day, I saw Bobby at the store, <laughs> and I said, thank you, Jesus. There's my tenor singer right there, <laughs> and we've been here ever since. So who brought you into the group? Uh, back this, this uh, Sam did most of it, and okay. then well, Robert saw me the last time when uh, I think one of the, James Hill passed, and then Robert called me and asked me would I come in. That's when I came and stayed this time. No, does anyone know the origin of the name of the group, the Fairfield Four? It started in, in that South Nashville. That the name of the church was the old Fairfield Baptist Church, and the group started right there. Okay. And as we learned earlier today during the concert, it started out as a trio. Right. Sometimes it grows past a quartet. <laughs> so is the name Fairfield Four just kind of an average? Average number of members. <laughs> yes, I, I've seen a group up to seven members. Seven members. Mm -hmm. And so, are they doing seven-part harmony there? What's mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how are they splitting that up? When, when well, I think what happens is um, they are constantly. If somebody gets sick, they find son, finding someone to replace them for a okay. certain time or right. period, and then when they, the other person gets back on his feet. They, the other guy did so well that they decided to keep him in the group. Okay. You know. And we are, you know, we're the youngest, probably the youngest group of, of, of the Fairfield Four. And while they, since they're up in age, you know, there's some days your knees don't work like it should. Mm -hmm. And they can't go, they can't go on the gig. So, so you know what I'm saying? There's it someone good, else. To it was good in. to have a spare. No, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, um, I want to ask each of you, and maybe we'll start with Mr. Thompson. Um, when did you feel that you were a bass singer? Like, when did you find each of your voices? Because you have such beautiful harmonies. But when did you know? I was the baritone singer in the other part. Okay. And when Dicky Pace uh, couldn't find a good bass singer nowhere, so I just said, well, heck, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I uh, didn't quite know all of the stuff, but thanks to Mr. Bird here and, and Brother Bobby there, they've been coaching me on some of those notes that I need to hit. <laughs> so this has got me going pretty good. Okay. What, what about you, Bird? Now, I, <clears throat> you know, after you, uh, you grow past your um, childhood and teenage years, your, group, your voice changes anyway. <clears throat> so um, 
I got to the point where I was an adult, a young adult, and my voice ended up here. I noticed I couldn't hit a lot of the high notes that the tenor singers sing, so I just got comfortable in this area of uh, singing baritone, and that's where I'm really comfortable at now. Okay. So you find your fit. And yes, find my fit, and that's stayed in that box. I guess I've been a tenor singer all my life. It's just been uh, either a high tenor or a mid tenor. And so <coughs> my, my range has really hasn't changed. It's gotten stronger over the years. Okay. Oh, yeah. So to say the least, I'm tenor. Been tenor and still is. And what about you? I'm also always been classified myself as a tenor singer and lead singer and that's why I've mostly been all my life and that's why I've stayed. So singing music has it been part of your lives growing up is in this tradition multiple musics what let's let's hear a little about musical background for everyone. Well, we're all Similar background. Okay. Pretty near the same. We were all brought up in church, singing families, and so it was pretty well, easy for us to get together. Come on. Speak it. Speak in the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I'm, I'm, these guys are from Tennessee. I'm from South Florida. Okay. And it's South Florida. I grew up in, a, in, a, in an area. I mean, South Florida is just like a, mi a melting pot. There's so many different nationalities and stuff. Because I remember in elementary school, you had a Chinese, uh, Spanish, Mexican, just everything, blacks, whites. So um, I got used to hearing, and then the radio played everything. It wasn't just one type of music. Mm -hmm. And I'm really a musician by trade. Uh, they pulled me in as a vocalist, but I'm more of a musician. But uh, I love it, and I, like I said, growing up, I, I, I experienced it all, so I, uh, I became comfortable singing or playing and dealing with all types of music, so. Oh, here's one other thing about the four of us. We all grew up in a similar type home after talking to each other, meeting these guys. Mm -hmm. Our parents were in church, and we heard gospel music all the time. Okay. So we, we were exposed to stuff young our age, you know, listening to their music, listening to our parents' music, so. I so guess, it was all around. Yeah, I guess the gift was just passed on to us from our parents. Mm -hmm. And then are there younger generations that you all are working with to, to pull in, maybe not into the group, because you're not ready to be done, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but pulling into the tradition, into that embrace of music. Believe it or not, we don't see a lot of that. I'll let Bobby take good talk about that. Yeah, well. And, and it is becoming a lost art. People do, after they hear us sing, a lot of young people come to us and maybe ask us about how long we've been singing, but hadn't gotten to a point where they are picking up the style yet, the acapella, traditional style. But they are some young singers, and they are picking up uh, vocal controls. They are listening to us as if they are curious about how we make turns and how we change a chord from made it a minor, but as far as backing and getting behind this traditional style, style is, it's almost a lost art. Mm -hmm. but, but it's in the demand, though, so I don't understand why people, you know, they want to hear it, but it seems like nobody's interested in learning how to, yeah. Maybe they're too intimidated. <laughs> I mean, because to yeah, your point of how you do some of the, the chords and just listening to the interaction of your voices earlier, I'm curious if you could talk to me about how you come up with some of the arrangements. What, what's the process? What are you listening to or listening for? I think, I think it had to be in my... I think you have to, <clears throat> have to be in... We've listened to this. Mm -hmm. the, the four of us, like, we come up in this, you know, and, and we got, kind of got away from it, especially Joe and I, uh, 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 listening to the Fair Fair Four us growing up, and we got to the music, and the a cappella style kind of went away. But like we were just always kind of familiar with it, but never just really did it, you know, like Joe had, but I had. And so, but like, I love it. And the younger people today, I see some seem like they're interested in, I don't know if they're gonna do it or not. Well, let's hope. <laughs> and I mean, cause I'm hearing the, 
heavy, heavy gospel tradition, but I'm also hearing some other influences in some of your arrangements and some of your vocal harmonies. Can anyone speak to where you're picking that up or how that's coming in? Well, you know, we're an acapella. We're an acapella group, so we don't have music, so we have to create the music. So, you know, we have some, a little, I have a little music theory, so we have to put those, that information together and try to create music. Of course, you know, the bass singers keeps the rhythm, the bump, to the, keep the pulse, and then we try to concentrate on fitting those chords in our voices uh, that, that's missing. Mm -hmm. you know, so we try to create vocal singing and vocal music at the same time. Now what, maybe we can talk a little about the, the place Nashville, right? So it's home to three of you, and now do you live there? Yeah, you, yeah. So you guys are still, I mean, because the band, the group has been a Nashville based yes. from day one. Yes. Right. How has the, in Nashville's known as a musical center for a couple different kinds of music, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but how has that environment influenced the development of the, the group over the past 90 odd years? You know, I think it seemed like to me that the Fairfield Force sound was developing in the early 20s and we hadn't let it go. Okay. It's, it's, still, it's still a Fairfield Force sound. And uh, I think our, what we were always trying to do is just continue to hold that tradition as it, like the second generation, they sounded like the first generation. And maybe the first generation sounded more like uh, the Gates, you know, or, or that similar combination. That, what they found then in the 20s, uh, we still holding on to that. Okay. But so, as far as the industry itself, we learned a lot about the fact that music, uh, Nashville is a music center. We, you know, we, we go in studios and we learn how to sing and what to do and when to do it. I think that's, that's been a big thing with us. You know, there's a million singers out here, but sometimes you can overdo this or, or not do enough here and there. And so being on the music center, that really does help us. We see the professionals, other professionals, you know. And, and you've we, recorded with some of them yes. and performed with some of them. And we pick up So stuff. there's a lot of interaction yes, there, huh? Yes, great interaction. Oh, okay. Now, earlier I mentioned to you that uh, back in 1940, on this very stage, <laughs> the Golden Gate Quartet did a version of Noah that you did today. All right, so the stage is... is carrying this song in many, yes. many ways. Um, what other kinds of uh, important moments have you experienced in performing in the past eight years as the current configuration? What are some highlights, some places you've performed that you just stepped away and said, wow? Well, I, I remember, personally, I remember in, in, um, we went to um, Konya, Turkey. And that festival consisted of uh, artists from all around the world. So they had, we, we represented the United States as African-American music. But per, you know, you had Persian music, you had every music from all around the world. And I, th I, I learned a lot just from listening to that um, experience. Mm -hmm. You had, it, it sounded like, I forget the, the type of music it was, but they did, you know how he sings low, mm -hmm. they were about twice as low. <laughs> and it was like a, it was like a, uh, 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 a chant. Okay. There was a bunch of guys, and they sung a chant, and I had never seen that before. Wow. I never, but that's one of the things that stuck out with me. What a great experience, yeah, experience yes. through, through your music to be able to travel around and experience this other stuff. Yes. A anyone else have any, any moments that stand out from your time with the group that... I don't know. I, I, I can remember how maybe the first two or three folk festivals we done mm -hmm. and the style of music that they was doing and, and I was grabbing hold of it and then when we did our version of our gospel and they seemed to be amazed as if we were sharing some type of a legacy between us and the, and the people who, who play folk music. Mm -hmm. So I mean kind of like I, I, I felt like uh, I felt in place rather than out of place once we got started and we was responding to them just like they responded to us. It's an interaction thing and I, and I like that feeling because when you think about folk, folk festivals or folk music, you think about banjos and, and, and upright basses, but then when we set stage and got on, it was the same type of inner vibes that, 
they got from us that we got from them. Mm -hmm. Bringing another living tradition yeah. to the yeah. stage and yeah. getting that interaction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, um, so the group has been award was awarded an NEA National Heritage Fellowship in, in 1989. Um, three Grammys, as you mentioned, a bunch of other accolades, Gospel Hall of Fame. Um, how does that make you feel as part of this longer tradition of the Fairfield Four? Uh, I feel truly blessed yes, that's the to word. be able to, to, to do what we do. And uh, we try to keep God in our midst. And this is one of the things that I think that has helped each one of us uh, to, to stay together, love one another, and when you love one another, you feel the same, you know, and our voices go, just go along with what we feel. Yeah. I think that's a good word to use. We, we do feel blessed because we didn't do anything special to deserve this spot in this, you know, in, in this time. Uh, so we feel like we've been picked out to be blessed, and we, we really appreciate it. Try to give God all the glory, all the praise. We believe, we believe he's the reason. Amen. In other words, we don't, we don't take any credit. Okay. We give it all to him. Mm -hmm. As long as you put him first, you got to be going to good. Now, how often do you perform a year? You guys on the road constantly or? Believe it or not. No. <laughs> not constantly. <laughs> You know, it seems to work out as it's not hurting us physically. Uh, we are, we're in and out of uh, concerts and, and appearances. Seem to be just enough to handle our, our status of age and stuff. You know what I mean? When it's time to get, get some rest, we off. And when it's time to get up and go, then the books get filled. So once again, it's, it's, it's by faith that things are happening, even our work and our performances and now being put on a platform to, 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 to sing the word and, and, and send that message. Seemed like even today that it was like, it was just in the nick of time that we, we was here to give them what they wanted and they gave up what we wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not, it's, it's not by accident. It seemed like it's already <laughs> predestined what we need to be doing and how we do it and, and how people accept us and we accept them. Yeah, it seemed to me out in the audience that um, you all are having a good time up here. <laughs> Without a doubt, we do. <laughs> we do. And you are also do. giving that and getting that from the yes, audience. Yes. Is that? Yes. Yes. And it seems like that's somehow connected into the gospel tradition, too. Yes, yes it is. The where gospel happens in uh, house of worship. Yes. <laughs> yes. Heaven church. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, it's part of a, a larger engagement with the audience with God, with your beliefs. Yes. Right. And you bring that to the stage, too. Yeah. So That's our intention. That's our full intention, to bring some people to God. Well, you, you know, we feel if we can get one person to turn their life toward God, you know, we feel he'll be pleased with what we do. Because this is Jesus lift a whole multitude of people who went across the water to get one. So if we can save one, we feel like God will be pleased with what we do. This is why we enjoy what we do. Mm -hmm. right, right. And I'm guessing that you're still, you're still singing in churches? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Anywhere we can, we always try to bring the church. We, we're going to bring the church. Mm -hmm. I don't care where we sing. Yeah, I mean, again, that's what struck me from just our hour with you on the stage as a performance, it wasn't just a staged concert. You were inhabiting right. <laughs> where you want to be with the music. This is what we're all about. And it's strange that you say that because we even do that when we rehearse. We okay. are, when we, re we rehearse as if we are here doing some things. So, and it makes it easy. We, cor we stop and correct ourselves as we go. But the whole thing about this is how we present ourselves before people even even uh, in between the songs, what we say, <clears throat> and how we say it, not being offensive, but we're being ourselves. And it, so we practiced it. <laughs> we, um, we, uh, 
do the Bible say if, if I be lifted up, I'll draw a man. So we just mm -hmm. making a presentation. Uh, you'd be surprised at the people who don't know about the Lord as and, as their Savior. Mm -hmm. So we make the presentation, and uh, he'll do the drawing. You know, we can't do it. So we just try to share the Lord Jesus with everyone mm -hmm. when we come into contact with. And you bring that into the studio, too. Yes. I mean, just having listened to, Same thing. <laughs> to the recordings yeah. over the time. So for you, it's all part of a whole of what... Mm -hmm what you're engaged with as right. Fairfield 4. Yes. So we talked about a little, a little bit about the younger generation, but what do you see as the future of the Fairfield 4? What are you guys up to next? More well, CDs. <laughs> more CDs. It's time, it's, it's time more of the grind. It's time for another <laughs> CD, but um, I guess we, 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 believe it or not, we've talked about the next generation and we can't see it. I'm pretty sure the guys didn't see us coming in. So we kind of like, Bobby, Bobby made a great comment. We just leave it up, let Lord, the Lord handle it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And see, he always seemed to find, to put the right people in place. And that's how it's been all along. Uh, it's hard to just go find exactly what you need okay. to keep it going. <laughs> so. And it's funny, Brother Burry said that, because I didn't know he could sing. <laughs> it, all I saw him playing his music, you know. And I remember my wife was in church one day, and we heard this chorus singing, and we were trying to figure out who was singing the lead. Nobody's mouth was moving. And my wife, we peeped around everybody, and I stood up, and it was Bird. <laughs> <laughs> I said, baby, that boy can sing. Listen to him. So it was not hard to just bring him on in because we were close anyway. So once you heard, heard his voice. You yeah, thought, when I heard that voice, I said, okay, that's him. Now, do any of you have a favorite song to perform, whether you're in church or on stage or in the studio, something that you just, as a go-to? It's, it's hard to that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. pick up a favorite song when you've been singing as long, especially as long as Joe and I. It, it's it's hard to do mm -hmm. that, you know, because I like all kind of music and all kind of songs, and it just just to pick one favorite, I don't, I, don't, I can't really. Just really I have do one that. favorite uh, in my church. I open up service just about every Sunday, and this Jesus keep me near the cross. That had been close to me than any of the other, and uh, I don't know. I just my pastor's wife said. Deacon Thompson, uh, I believe that's your favorite song because you he sang that all the time. <laughs> I say, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> is is there a song that maybe has traveled through all three generations of the Fairfield Four that you would anyone would identify as a? And there's a Fairfield Four sound, but is there a song that maybe has? Yes, that dig a little deeper. Okay. Man, that don't let nobody and don't turn let nobody you turn you around. Okay. I grew up listening to those two songs from the Fairfield Four. And now you that, that's a song. Now you now you perform right, those songs. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing to me that, that mm -hmm. again that sort of generational rejuvenation and, and joy that comes through the performance. I definitely I definitely heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Okay. So you, so you said you enjoy all kinds of music, and yeah. those of you who identify as musicians, although I think you're all musicians. Um, <laughs> I even hear music that I don't understand what they're saying from different language, but something about the music just seems to just grab hold to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you try to bring those ideas into what you're doing? It's, it, you, you I mean, again, do, you're carrying on a tradition, but you're also... You do it unconsciously. You do yeah. it unconsciously, okay. you know, because if you hear something that you really like, it's hard to just get, throw it out of your mind. Mm -hmm. right. So you can easily do it unconsciously, bring in an idea. I'm a rhythm guy, and I just, I, I hear <laughs> stuff, and I just, yeah, I have to bring it in, mm -hmm. you know, try to squeeze it in, get it in, make it fit somewhere. And it seems like to me that's also part of the larger tradition of gospel, which incorporates a whole bunch of different musical influences and ideas. Exactly. But always towards a goal or a purpose, too, yes, given yes. where the tradition comes from. Yes, yes. 
and that 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 resonates with with your experiences yes yes it does excellent now i have to ask about oh brother where art thou <laughs> Because you brought it up okay. <laughs> on stage, <laughs> and so um, who was in, who who appeared in the movie? None of us. Neither None of, of us. Right? Okay. Of us. Okay. I didn't think so, but but how? So how do you carry that mantle too? I mean, the Fairfield Four is known as being in that movie, and they were in the movie, but it was the previous generation. The exact second generation. At least they got the sound. Maybe they need to do a, like a reboot of the movie and have you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. That would be great. Because yeah. your version of that song, I mean, was so, so wonderful, too. So did you learn that as growing up with the Fairfield Four, or yeah. did you kind of bring that in? Yeah, we, 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 just, we decided to sing that song, learn, learn it and sing it, because there's so many people that I could identify with the, with the, the Fair Fear 4 mm -hmm. in that movie. So if we're the Fair Fear 4, we have to... We have to you have a responsibility of some yeah, sort. Yeah, right? have some, also, some type of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you go about learning a tune like that, so that, might have, that was a, a new one for you four, mm -hmm. um, you listen to the recordings. You how do you how do you go about learning a, a new song, a new arrangement? Listen. listen to it. Yeah. And then when we listen to a song, each one of us know our parts. We can hear our part. You know the bass. It's easy to pick out the bass singer. It's the bottom <laughs> note and the top note. Is the, so it's, we have to feel out, find our Bobby and I have you, to the, find the our middle, song, <laughs> the middle section. Yes. Okay. But it, it's fairly easy since we've been doing it a while. Mm -hmm. You know we can hear what's going on and. Uh, so you all can just lock in to harmonies and parts with each other. And even that song, we put our own twist on it. On yeah. The end. yeah. So we added yeah. a little something allowance, but it makes it fair feel for. <laughs> <laughs> got to be fair feel for. It's got to be. <laughs> um, so let's see, what else? What else don't we know about the Fairfield Four and, and the legacy and, and, and even like the, the current generation? What you know, what what should people know? Well I'll start this one off. Well I'm a I'm 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 more of a musician myself. These guys gave me a chance to sing and I love doing it. But my background is pretty much the rhythm sections in a band. And that's where I started. I started playing in church where um I was a little boy, and my parents, my mother, was at a, what, a type church that they called a sanctified church back in those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't have a whole band, but you could always usually hear a, a snare a drum mm -hmm. and a tambourine mm -hmm. always beating. Okay, you'd hear a guitar here and there, an organ here and there. Mm -hmm. at those, these whole, they called them sanctified holiness churches. There was a man uh, in this one church that just weared out a guitar out. And once I heard that, I just fell in love with a guitar. And of course, I got one soon after that. My mother had made me, she made me promise that if she bought one, I'd learn to play it, and I did learn to play it. So that's where I got started, and it stuck with me all these years. And, the, and you're still work, are you working on music outside of the Yes, I play, I play organ for two churches. Oh, okay. So that's, that's what I'm doing when I'm not out here in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're busy. Yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> now, I mean, you, well, you bring up a, a good point, though, about the, and, and it came up earlier, there is no band, you are the band. Yes. And the rhythmic component is so crucial. Yes. And I was hearing a lot of really interesting sort of syncopations and rhythmic stuff across the vocal parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and that's, kind of, I mean, that's something you, yes. you have to work on. You have to work on it. It's not, it's not as easy as it seems. No. No. <laughs> Thanks to Brother Bobby for that. <laughs> he keeps us all in check. <laughs> he, 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 he keeps the rhythms moving around. Oh, yes, yes. He's one of us. <laughs> well, some people think this is real easy to do. It's not. They haven't tried, huh? All right. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you all make it look so easy, but that's because you're, like you said, you've been doing it your whole lives in, in, in some form or another. Yes. Um, but, but it does take the practice. So you guys are rehearsing and right. continuing to sing in church. And, yes. and when you love one another as we love each other, it's easy to 
to to to get stuff pretty well together because we don't get angry with each other. You know, if one make a mistake, and Brother Bobby he catches right quick, <laughs> and uh, you know he tells us, "Hey, you need to do a certain thing right here." Like, okay, sure, tell me. And that's how we gel together, one in unity. We are all four in unity, and we try to keep God in our midst. Mm -hmm. That's our main course. So you want to know about the other guy's background? Yeah. <laughs> background, Brother Joe kind of started it off. We all just about got the same kind of growing up, mm -hmm. families. Uh, my brother was a singer, had an uncle that was a singer, my mother was a singer, and it just, it just stayed with me. And I started singing when I was about five or six years old. And at the age of 12, I was singing with my uncle's gospel group as a lead singer. And I just kept on and on there. It just just always been in me. And this was in Nashville? The in Nashville, Nashville area? yeah. Okay. That's where I was born and raised in Nashville. Okay. Right. That's what about your background? I myself, yeah. I started early. Uh, my mother, she was, a, she was a choir leader, director, and she had me sing. She had us. It was 12 of us. So she had all of us brothers and sisters singing at an early age. I think I was five years old when I started singing, five and six in church. And uh, picking up instruments from the junior high, I was in the band. And from one thing led to the other, I started singing some other circular music. And uh, I got lost somewhere. And love brought me back. I got back in church, and now I'm a praise and worship leader at my church and do the male chorus and the mass choir when we're not here doing this. Uh, so I'm, uh, I think I, 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 I got lost like we all do sometimes, but then I got found again. Mm -hmm. So uh, the purpose that he had for me is I just had to s settle down and let him have his way. And uh, I'm grateful the opportunities and the chances that, uh, that we have together as, as the four of us they're like brothers to me, and we uh, we work like a unit. So uh, we are a unit. Yeah, I know <laughs> right now what you're saying is what, what my background is right here. What you see, mm -hmm. it, it just took a while to get it together, but this is it. This this is what it molded out to be, and I'm grateful. That I feel for. So I want to ask about the arrangement of Amazing Grace, as you bring up Lost and Found, because um, that arrangement was, it wasn't one I've heard before. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but so, yeah, did, did you all work that arrangement out? We yeah? did, yeah. We did. We did. What, uh, we, we did. what was driving that arrangement? What was the inspiration? We had church on our mind. It was, okay. I think somebody requested that song that we do. And we sit down one day at rehearsal, right. and we just took our time and just, we all went to church that night. Okay. And we just slowed it down and mm. just actually told a story. And I think, if truth be known, uh, tears came upon my eyes. Because the way we did it, it, it had to, we had to think about the song uh, more than just singing it, but telling the story. Mm -hmm. And things flashing back in your mind. And, it is amazing. His grace is amazing. Yeah, that was a moving yeah. arrangement. Yeah. Yeah. So we give all the credit for that because all, all of us had a thumb and a finger in that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Fairfield Four for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and we look, and we look we look back on our lives in this group. You know, this this group of guys right here, we never would have we never would have come together as a group. We were all doing different things, completely mm -hmm. going other ways. But we, here we are, look, and mm -hmm. it's working just fine. It's great. A good relationship, a good working relationship, and it's just working fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pointing up because there's nobody but God. There's, there's nothing else. He, got to it. he put us all together. Yeah. Now we ourselves, God did. That's the way we feel about it. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this interview here. Um, any, any final thoughts on performing here on the Coolidge stage or? Well, we want to thank y'all for having us and, uh, and the interview. This is uh, it's still a learning experience for me and uh, 
what what you bring in is even helping us more. Well, We're still growing. <laughs> and we That's humbling. Thank you for doing this interview, and it was an honor for us to be here and to do this. And we pray that we, this interview and our singing and praises help somebody else along the way. Find the way. And Amen. Well, yeah, it was definitely a great gift. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank All you. Right. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.